I sat in at a jam session when I was like 18 or 19 when I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the the Mingus big band uh, oh. were, were in town that night and the rhythm section and some of the the cat that the horn players uh, got up um, and played this tune. And it was just it was just all blues, right? But I was this like skinny, young, 17 year old, 18 year old kind of like guy with a trumpet, like, you know, yeah. in my home, in my hometown, kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna get up and play. And they were kind of burning through all blues, and there's all these great songs. Like, oh, this is great. So I I got up to play. And as soon as I started playing, the rhythm section went swirly and weird and out and just really fucked me up. I think because <laughs> they were like, I think they were just like, Who, who's this? We, we yeah. haven't invited, we haven't invited them up. We're going to really screw with them. And I got completely lost, you know, and I played and played and I tried to get back in and I played a really long solo, <laughs> like too uncomfortably long, you know. <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. horrible it was so horrible and then i come off stage and this guy was like hey man that was a long song <laughs> it was like when I, I don't even know who it was it was like the alto player from the mingus big band it was like that was a long solo and i was like yeah just i said like, something like i didn't know how to because I, I i didn't know how to stop because i didn't know where the form had gone right you know so just and, and I, I just said i didn't know how to stop and he said man just take the horn off your mouth man So anyway, we're we're doing we do this first you know rehearsal sound check on the day of the gig, playing all this really complicated music that I, I just couldn't play a lot of it, you know. Um, and it got to the the break between that and the gig, and I knew I had to go on and do this gig, and I was just like, it was the most uncomfortable I've ever felt on a stage. I think mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's probably been others that I'm forgetting, but that was definitely like that really gave me that really gave me an amazing kick up the ass that I needed, yeah. you know, because guess what after that i checked out playing an odd time signatures and i started studying harmony a bit you know and yeah, yeah but, but i i kind of maybe everyone needs that experience because up until that point i i kind of thought i was doing all right you know i was kind of playing these standards and you know I, i'd written the odd tune um but i was kind of maybe getting away with it a bit more than i realized and then yeah. i had that experience and i was like okay i've, I've, I've got a go back and do some serious homework now so it was ultimately a good thing and then the next the next time i did another gig with the same kind of group of musicians playing similar music it was like okay this is how it should feel this is good okay yeah <laughs> well i mean that, that's a really great uh point that i think you know first of all you do have to put yourself in situations where you're uncomfortable if you want to grow i mean if you and and the more you do that and the 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 more you stretch yourself the more potential you have for growth now the flip side of that is that if you do that too much or you're not not prepared to be in that kind of uh, testing situation then that's when it becomes very easy to quit you know because you get so frustrated and things like that so um you know so when we we're talking about education um, you know, how do you, how do you coach or mentor your, your students through that process of, you know, Hey, look, if you want to be the best way to get good is to, in some ways, dive in the deep end, you know, and, and swim with the big boys and, and you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to sound like ass and you're going to, you know, you're going to feel embarrassed. Uh, but you know, you know, you'll know, then you'll know what you don't know. Uh, you know, so how do you get them, you know, to do that, but also keep them, you know, grounded with the, you know, the, the mental side of it, that it's part of the growth process and, you know, don't be freaked out when you can't do something. Yeah. I mean, definitely if it's, if it's jazz, jazz students, um, I definitely always say, you know, go to jam sessions, le learn some tunes and go to jam sessions and sit in with people. And if they call a tune that you don't know, you know, have a go you know um if it's if it's really something you can't hear you know go and go back and do a bit of homework but you know with standards you should be able to kind of feel your way through it the first time if you don't know it you know because generally standards aren't that challenging you know harmonically particularly a lot of them you know it's like yeah there's different substitutions and there's some some standards have got some complex forms and all that but on the whole um standards are you're looking at you know pretty standard harmony so if you don't know a tune um just listen to it especially if there's a singer there even better just you don't have to play the tune you know but play a solo feel your way through it go and sit in at jam sessions 
listen to music, man. You know, like the, the amount of people that maybe that I've I've come across who want to play jazz, but they've not really checked out much jazz. Mm-hmm. You know, it tend it tends to be people from like um I've had lots and lots of classical trumpet players come uh and ask me for lessons and probably 75% say I want to work on my range, you know, which is kind of, for me, it's like one of the most boring questions I get asked, how do you play high, you know? Um, and then you get some that are, that, that want to, you know, I want to get my, you know, I want to, I want to learn jazz, mm-hmm. but you quickly discover that they've not really checked out any jazz. They've, they've maybe heard one or two things that they've liked, but it's like, okay, have you, have you checked out Louis Armstrong? Have you checked out Clifford Brown? Have you checked out Miles Davis? You know, you, you list a load of names and they, they haven't heard of half of them, you know, yeah. and they don't, they don't listen to the music. I think, I think jazz, especially, I think all music, but I think jazz, jazz music, especially folk music as well. Uh, but, you know, music that's kind of an, almost like an oral tradition. It's like learning a language. So if you're going to learn German, you can't learn it by reading German out of a textbook. You can only really truly learn it if you experience how it sounds. You listen to people doing it. You copy people. You eventually internalize what the words are. So then you can use the words and then you can start to put sentences together and then you can speak the language. I think that's what you have to do with jazz. It's like when a baby's learning to speak, you know, they, they copy you. They, they, they say single words until they eventually understand the word. And then they can eventually get a sentence and then eventually they're having a conversation with you. And the more creative, you know, kids are so creative with conversation. It's a shame that we kind of lose that as we get older. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think with jazz music, it's exactly the same. You've got, uh, yes, you've got to study the theory, of course, but I think you've got, it's got to be a kind of oral thing. You've got to listen, internalize, copy. You've got to copy and then come up with your own thing eventually. But if, if you don't do that, you're, you're not really going to, be able to play the music kind of authentically, I think, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely.